Hi everyone, I'm going to continue the series of the Daf Yomi. We are in Daf Nun today. That is page number 50 of a Masechet Nedarim, naturally. And today we've got a love story, actually. The story of Rabbi Akiva, how he met his wife, Rachel. It relate, relates all over that. And actually I did a video on Masechet Ketubot on the Samach Bet, page 62, only a few months back. And it related, it was very similar much page of the Gemara. So what's going on here? So there was, in a nutshell, the story was, which we celebrate, we talk about during Lag of Omer and the Spirit of Omer, was a Rabbi Akiva. He was an, in, he didn't know much uh, Torah whatsoever. He was uh, very devoid of any Torah knowledge. In fact, the Talmud says that when he saw a Torah scholar, he actually felt the desire to bite a Torah scholar at that point in time. So in the Gemara today, it relates over that he meets a woman of the name Rachel. And Rachel, Rachel, sees a great potentiality in uh, Akiva uh, and really wants to marry him. But however, he knew he was devoid totally of any Torah. He didn't have any Torah knowledge whatsoever. And her father, Cal... Kalba Sabua said that you must not marry this man, Akiva. She, he even uh, threatened to disown her if he was going to get married to her. And uh, however, ignoring her father's wishes at that time, Kalba Sabua's it wishes, she married Akiva. Anyway, who became the great Rabbi Akiva later on. She saw the potentiality, the midot, the great characteristics of this uh, fine man at the time. And then he went. they, they uh, were derived to a life of poverty, potentially. They had no money. The father disowned her. Kalba Savoir, and uh, they came up, they were, they were living in the most uh, minimal circumstance, and he went to learn Torah at the end. He, in fact, he spent 12 years learning Torah, and uh, after the 12 years, he came back with uh, many, many, with thousands and thousands of students, and then uh, he actually went back under his wife's blessings, let, without her knowing he came back. They, uh, he took on another 12 years of learning, ended up being 24 years of learning Torah non-stop, became the greatest Torah scholar arguably in the whole of the world possibly, and uh, came back with 24,000 students, and he was famous across the world. And uh, the wife got, uh, brought him back with, uh, with full of joy and everything else. And then the father found out there's a great Torah scholar in this area. His name is Rabbi Akiva. So uh, at that stage, he had regret that... Uh, his daughter, he disowned the daughter. I didn't know that, I believe, that Akiva had become his son-in-law. He became the greatest rabbi and actually went to Rabbi Akiva, who he didn't know was the son-in-law, and uh, said uh, he wanted to nullify the vow, which uh, we're talking about all in the town with today, about vows. He wanted, it nullified that, the disowning vow, and wants her to inherit from him again at that stage in time. So Rabbi Akiva asked, if you would have known he would become such a great Torah scholar or even know a little bit of Torah, would have you done that vow in the first place? And he said, no. So he regretted it. It was like a petach and he found out that it was, uh, there was a form of regret within regards to this and the vow was nullified. And lo and behold, he found out that Rabbi Akiva was actually his son-in-law married Rachel later on. So, you know, it's an amazing love story in uh, today's Talmud. Yeah, in the Masechet Nedarim, which is related to all over, and we learn all about it in the Sefirat Omer of how Akiva met Rachel, and uh, was arguably uh, one of the greatest rabbis in uh, Jewish history at the end. Al Kalba Savoa very much hit the jackpot by having such an amazing uh, Torah scholar as a son-in-law. So, guys, read about it. It's from Daf Nun in uh, Masechet Nedarim. I want to wish you all a fantastic day, and uh, be well. Bye.